Okay, guys, now on to probably the hardest thing when it comes to grasping electrical controls and automation is understanding the concept of normally open and normally closed. And this is mainly around relays, um, also contactors as well, but it's a principle that really needs to be understood to be able to piece together systems and understand how they're working. And it does take some time to wrap your head around this. So don't feel disheartened if this takes you a while to, to understand. Took me a long time, takes other people a long time, but it's really important that you do understand this for you to understand overall system operation. So let's just jump to page three and just remembering what we mentioned earlier. Everything is drawn in its non-energized state. Okay, like we mentioned with the MCBs, you can see there that they're open, they're non-energized. We can see down here, we've got our local isolator, it's non-energized, it's not closed. And the same applies with relays and the contact side of the relays or the pole one or pole two. So let's focus on relay four. It's not energized. Let's imagine it's not energized. It's in its normal, non-energized state. Now, let's look at the contact arrangement on pole one over here. So in its normal, non-energized state, as you can see here, R4 slash one is open. So this means that this is normally open, abbreviated with NO. So in terms of the project, the boiler is currently not enabled. So this relay doesn't energize, which means that this stays in its normally open, normally open state. Now let's have a look at relay five and imagine that it has been energized. So the boiler has gone into fault, which means that relay five does energize, which means R5 over here closes and then allows that power to go down here and light up that fault. But that was still wired in the normally open configuration, just as R4 was or R4 slash one. So that's normally open and that's probably the easier one to understand. And go back and rewatch that if you need to. Now let's have a look at normally closed contact. So page two, and we're looking at the pressurization unit down here. So again, non-energized state, so nothing's changed. So again, you can see the MCB is in its non-energized state. The local isolator is in its non-energized state. There's no power there. So R3 is in its non-energized state. But if we look at the contacts, on the first pole of relay three, on this relay, not only are we using the normally open contacts over here, similar to the last example, we're also using normally closed contacts. I'll get into the details of this in a second, but in its non-energized state, look what we've got happening. We've got our 24 volt AC feed up here, and because that's normally closed, it's going down here and it's bringing on that fault light. So this is in its normally closed, actually I'll draw it over here, normally closed state. And this side is the normally open contact of relay three, pole one. Now let's imagine it in its energized state. So we have got power and this pressurization unit has gone into fault. So what that means is we've got power going up here and it's energizing R3. Remember, this is the coil side, which then switches the contact side. So R3 coil is energized, which now means that this goes from the normally closed side to the normally open side, which now means we've got our supply going down this way and bringing on the green normal light. And at the same time, it's move that contact from over here, which was on the normally closed side, which means that there's nothing traveling down 
this leg anymore and switching off this fault light here. So R3, pole 1, you can see that we're using the normally closed contact and the normally open contact. So we're wiring into both of those normally open and normally closed. We want to use both of those options. Now, now guys, I haven't got a relay where we're only using the normally closed side. So what I've done is I've just erased that leg that was using the normally open side, just so I can show you what it's like just using the normally closed side of a contact. So non-energized state, this relay is not energized, which means in the normally closed position, because it's normal state, not energized, means that we've got power just running through here and bringing on the fault light. Now let's look at it in its energized state. So this is now energized, and what happens is, is the contact switches, so it goes from the normally closed over to the normally open, so that goes across like that, and that opens up, and then the power goes down this way. But because we're not wiring into that normally open contact, nothing happens. So all that happens is this fault light switches off, and then when this relay isn't energized, then this switches back over here, and the fault light comes back on, because it's back in its normal state, and it's wired to the normally closed. And I think what makes this concept harder to understand when you're just looking at schematics is the fact that you have to visualize states of contacts changing from like the normally open, sorry, the normally closed to the normally open when certain things are energized or not energized. So again, that takes quite a bit of time to get your head around. So again, don't feel disheartened if this takes a bit of time. Once you've got this down, this will this will work wonders for you and you'll you'll progress very, very quickly. Just a quick one, sorry to interrupt, but this video that you're watching right now is actually a lesson taken from our new training program that's coming out this Friday. And if you wanted to master the first steps in controls and automation, giving you a very solid foundation, enabling you to feel more confident in working in control panels, working with systems, understanding relays, contactors, PLCs, and how they all work together. Also enabling you to fault find and diagnose systems far more efficiently, and even the ability to start designing your own control and automation systems across any industry. Then if that sounds good, click the link in the description right now, and I'll make sure that I send you the other early access free training videos coming out this week, and I'll let you know when the program goes live on Friday. Now, sorry this is a bit blurry, but this is the electrical diagram that's come from the Wago relay. And I just want to show you how this diagram that comes off the Wago data sheet for the relay relates to what we've drawn in the schematics. And it should be pretty self-explanatory, but there is some sort of subtle differences. So we've got our coil side here and we've got our contact side over here so let's focus on the coil side so we got our a1 we got our a2 and this is what actually represents the coil and this is where i'm writing like the relay number and then how many poles it is so the coil side that's pretty self-explanatory that pretty much matches exactly what we've got in the schematics now on the contact side so let's say this is this is pole one, pole one over here, and this is pole two. So or we could just put slash one and slash two. And I haven't written the numbers in the drawing. And the reason I've done that is because people then get too caught up on numbers and they don't end up understanding the principles and the logic behind what's actually happening. So I've purposefully left them off on the majority of the relays used, so we actually think about the logic and the operation. But what we've got is we've got three connection points that we can wire into the contact side of the relay if we choose to. Now, we may choose, like we've done on a lot of these relays, we may choose that we don't need to wire into the normally closed part 
of the relay contact. So a lot of relays, we're not wiring in there. So we're literally just using 11 and 14. And 11 is the common. So this is always going to be used on the contact side of the relay. So 11 and 14 or 11 and 12, or we can use 11 with 12 and also 14. But let's just focus on 11 and 14. So we've got a cable supply coming in here, and that's 24 volts, let's say. We haven't got anything wired to 12, so we've got a cable coming in on 11, and that's supplying 24 volts, but then it's going nowhere when the contact's in this position. You've got nothing wired over here. Now, when we energize this relay, this contact goes from this position to this position, which means now that that 24 volt gets switched and then goes back on 14, or goes out on 14, and then we do something downstream from there. So let's apply that in our drawing. So we do energize R3 over here, and then what happens is that common number 11 i've drawn it in on this occasion that is supplied with the 24 volts that contact has switched from the normally closed to the normally open and then that 24 volts goes then out on the normally open contact which is number 14 and then in this example the thing that's happening downstream is that normal green light is switching on now let's have a look at what's happening on the second pole. So again, we're not using the normally closed side, so we can forget that, but we've got a cable feeding in to 21, and then when that switches, because we've energized this relay, this is energized, that switches, which means that that cable, whatever that voltage is, which we'll look at in a second, that voltage now goes through here and then back on 24 which is the normally open contact so let's have a look at where that second pole is so it's relay three and if you go to page 12 we can see it's the pressurization unit fault signal so r3 slash two and you can see that we're using the normally open contact and it's being supplied from over here and this is actually a 3.3 volt signal so 3.3 volt signal is traveling on that second pole so it's going out of here from the plc and then this and this is number 21 and this is number 24 as we can see number 21 and number 24 are normally open so that closes which then allows that signal to go into terminal three of this PLC unit. And as you can see, we're not using the normally closed contact. So there's no 22 and there's no cable being used anywhere for the normally closed side. So that's redundant, not being used. So as you can see, in terms of like the wiring, the cable wiring, we're always wiring to the A1 and A2 on the coil side of the relay else the relay is not going to work so we always need those wired connections but then on the contact side it depends on the application and what we're trying to achieve but we're always going to have the supply connected to the common and on pole one it's number 11 and on pole two it's 21 and then we're either going to use the normally open which is 14 on pole one and 24 on pole two or we're using the normally closed which is number 12 on pole one and number 22 on pole two or perhaps we're using both the normally closed and the normally open what you'll never see and something to be aware of and to make sure you guys never do is that there's never going to be a wired connection to 12 and 14 because if you have a look at what's happening let's say that the the supply is coming in on 12 and going out on 14 what's going to happen is it's either going to go like that when this isn't energized or when it is energized it's just going to go to here so nothing's going to happen and it's the same thing the other way around vice versa supplying 
on the 14 and going out on the 12. You've got an open circuit, basically. So just as a final reminder, guys, on pretty much every single relay, but a few, we're using pole one for the indicator lights, the electromechanical signal. And then on the second pole, on pretty much every relay, we're using that for the PLC signal. So you could say the electronics side. So we got the electromechanical on pole one and we got the electronics on pole two. And we've also got to remember that they're different voltages. So we got 24 volt AC on pole one and we've got 3.3 volts on pole two. So here we're able to isolate the two voltages, the two signal types away from each other, but still operating in unison. So this is what's known as having them galvanically isolated. And then finally, guys, how I like to think of normally open, normally closed is a car bridge analogy. So we got our coil here, which is our R3. And then we've got our cable or road, which is our common coming in here. And then we've got our other roads going out this way. And this one's going to be our normally closed. And this is going to be our normally open. These roads are obviously representing wires. And then we've got our very well, well drawn cars coming in on the road this way, connected to our common. And then in normally non energized state, the bridge is down this way. So our cars can flow down there. And then the bridge changes state. So the relay energizes that bridge shifts from down here to up here. And then the cars can flow this way. So yeah, hopefully that's just a more simplistic way to think about the contact side of a relay and how it's operating. The cars can only go one of two ways. They can either go down the normally open or they can go down the normally closed. We can wire for both options, but they can only travel in one direction at a time, depending on the state of that relay or bridge. Just a final reminder to click the link in the description so I can send you those early access free training modules from the program that's going live this week.